General anesthesia is one of the, the biggest medical discoveries in history. It completely revolutionized medicine. It, it allowed surgery really to develop. In my field with anesthetics, the agents really still have the same safety margins that they had in 1846 when we first did ether anesthesia at Mass General and demonstrated that publicly. So it's important to get a good understanding of how they act so we can make them safer. The reason that they are safe is because we have a profession to give them. It's one of the few drugs that has a profession built around it. Anesthesia is a pretty impressive phenomenon. You're basically there, then essentially you're, you're gone. But the key thing is we bring you back. You know, how did that happen? Where did the drugs act that allowed us to basically do that? So it's a, it's, it's, it's a fascinating question and, you know, one that has implications not only for the care of patients under anesthesia, but for understanding some very deep questions like consciousness, you know, awareness, and connects with a lot of other scientific issues like sleep, coma, hibernation. Couldn't think of a better problem to work on. It was research that led to the use of anesthesia in clinical care. And much of the progress that's made in clinical care is due to research. Research helps make clinical medicine progress. So I think it's fundamental to support research as our mission. The future will be better for people. So if we can make a better anesthetic, then obviously the 25 million people who have anesthesia in the USA will be better off. The wonderful thing about Massachusetts General Hospital, it has a very broad view of research. So we have a lot of basic science that involves nitric oxide, pulmonary hypertension, the mechanism of anesthesia, mechanisms of pain, of hyperalgesia. We also have translational research, including the phenotype of pain that's undergoing investigation right now. You could be an electrical engineer. You could find research opportunities in the department from developing new devices, smart devices, to working on the electronic record keeping and so forth, trying to make things more efficient. You could be a molecular biologist and you could work in neurobiology, you could work in the biology of pain, you could work in the intensive care unit. You could be a chemist and you could work in my unit. There are many things that you can do. Right now, people are more trying to find out whether or not the anesthetics can do any damage things to the brain tissues or to the brain. And that part has not been known before. And, and I, you know, this uh, thing called the post-operative cognitive function, showing that many people, particularly the senior people, the uh, elderly people, develop such symptoms, learning memory deficits, after surgery and anesthesia, but we don't know why. For other clinicians, you, you really take care of patients, but also other physician scientists. If you can solve this mystery, you can help more patients. Seeing how pain is generated and how from understanding the mechanisms of pain, uh, this could lead to new forms of therapy. Our invention, or our strategy rather, will enable only the pain fibers to be blocked so that uh, there'll be no numbness, there'll be no uh, loss of motor function. So a patient who has an epidural for labor pain, for example, would be able to move, they wouldn't be paralyzed, they wouldn't have a block of their uh, sympathetic nervous system, so they wouldn't have hypertension. And we hope that this new form of uh, anesthesia, also discovered at Mass General, is going to, again, transform the practice of anesthesiology. My clinical research focus started off in perioperative systems design as it relates to the OR of the future. And we did the initial outcomes studies for the ORF, uh, including an economic analysis and a throughput analysis. Uh, but from there, I really branched out into research uh, related to the anesthesia information management system. Recently, through collaboration with psychologists, we have begun to study the problem of adult learning in the near perioperative period. So we've initiated a new line of investigation uh, wherein we have standardized that teaching by using video to provide the teaching. And then we uh, look at what patients recall afterwards. This is certainly uh, ground, groundbreaking research. The Department of Anesthesia at the Massachusetts General Hospital is one of the top institutions in terms of receiving funding from the National Institutes of Health and other funding agencies. Uniquely, what the Massachusetts General Hospital has is we also have funding from the inventions that have come out of this department. And I don't think there's any other department of anesthesia who 
has been so successful in inventions that there's a funding stream from that. We have a terrific track record of training people to become independent researchers and we do that in a number of detailed ways, one of which is the CA3 Research Fellowship followed then by the NIH training grant which allows up to three years of research. As a senior resident you have the opportunity to spend six months of your third year in the lab there you can undertake a mentored research project that usually leads to some form of publication and it gives you the skills and training to launch an academic career, to apply for funding, and to make connections and to get your feet wet. One of the great things about Mass General is that we pretty much do every kind of surgery or procedure that's done. There are very few things that we don't do at Mass General. There are multiple labs concentrated. That gives me the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of people within our department, but also outside of our department. Harvard Medical School is across town. There's the Brigham and Women's Hospital. There's MIT. There's Boston University. I mean, it's, there's so many places here where all kinds of really exciting research is going on. We want to define a problem and we go ahead from uh, behavioral testing to the electrophysiology and to molecular biology. And if the technique we do not have, we would find collaborators either within the building or within the Harvard community or across the country. There are three fundamental attributes physicians need adaptability, flexibility, and resilience. Taking care of patients requires many skill sets, not just knowledge, but learning how to work with people, learning how to think about evidence, learning how to adapt to changes in medicine and knowledge. I encourage people to engage in any kind of research because I think you can learn these skills through just engaging in research. I would say this is probably one of the best places to train because there's so many large labs here conducting many different kinds of research. It's really a great combination to be able to go to the operating room, perform clinical anesthesia, administer anesthesia to patients, use these drugs, and then come back to the lab and study how these drugs actually work to produce the effects that they produce. And I just think that it's a, it's a really exciting thing to be able to do both. The confidence that the MGH residency instills is a key to being a successful researcher. People who graduate from here are just not afraid to tackle problems. A good research environment needs to be very supportive for one thing. And secondly, it needs to inspire young people. At Mass General, you have the opportunity to create your own opportunities because we don't try and do a top-down type of organization on you. We want to develop you up so you grow into what you want to be. Yeah, she's offline now. Yeah. To somebody who's having any anxiety about a choice of career path, whether they're thinking about clinical work but think they might like to do research, thinking about becoming a researcher but wondering what would happen to their clinical skills, I would say don't worry. If you're in an academic center that has enough critical mass uh, to sustain both missions, you can do both and be successful at both. In my lifetime in medicine, research has made a big difference in terms of patient outcomes, patient quality of life, patient care. Over the lifetime, I think, of the residents who are coming into Mass General, they will see the practice of medicine uh, transform before them. And they have an opportunity to play a major role in that by getting involved in the research and applying it in, in, in their clinical practice. Being inspired about your problem, wanting to solve it, putting that first, really going for it, the ability to be disappointed, to fail, and to keep going. That's what progress in medicine is all about. The rewards are enormous in terms of, uh, firstly, the rewards for doing something that is satisfying, exciting, challenging, um, but you need perseverance. You need to be able to fight, you need to be able to deal with rejection, you need to enjoy the occasional rewards, but deal with the drudgery of getting there. So it takes a particular kind of person and we're always looking for that kind of person to join our lab. The reason to choose Massachusetts General is we have incredibly skillful and talented faculty, knowledgeable faculty who can give you the perspective, the skills, critical thinking that you need for longevity in a career in medicine. This is a great place. It's a good place. This is a cool place to be right now. So, so there you go.